Good afternoon, my name is Simon Dunn, Bobby Goldsmith Foundation Ambassador. Today I'm joined with fellow Bobby Goldsmith Ambassador, Steve Spencer. Um, we're going to have a little chat today as it is Buyer Visibility Week and Buyer Visibility Day is this Friday the 23rd. So Steve, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about more about Buyer Visibility Day? Sure. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, I think it's really exciting that we've got Buyer Visibility Day coming up. Um, it's a great opportunity um, for not just our community, the BIPLUS community to come together, um, but also for us to sort of branch out and show people what we're about and increase visibility of by, of by people. And um, before I um, introduce myself, I'll just go over a couple of important terms. So um, I'll be using the term BIPLUS, um, and that refers to the whole community. And then there are other terms like bi, which refers to bisexual um, and bisexuality. And I identify as a bisexual man. Um, and so to go into who I am, um, I'm a Bobby Goldsmith Foundation Community Ambassador. Um, I'm also a director of NAPWA, um, the National Association of People with HIV Australia. And I also run the Sydney Bi Plus Network's um, HIV project. So I have my- You're a busy man. I'm, I, I like to keep busy. Um, just for the viewers at hands, can you just explain the difference, what Bi Plus means and Bi Bisexual, obviously, if there's any difference or yeah, for sure. how we may work ahead around that. Yeah, so bisexuality is a, um, a, a definition of, of asexuality. Um, so that refers to um, multi-gender attraction. Mm -hmm. the, a lot of people actually misunderstand what bisexuality means. So it's bisexuality, not bi-gender attraction. So bisexuality actually means um, the attraction to people of the same gender and attraction to people of a different gender. Um, it's never been about men or women. Bisexuality has always been uh, transgender inclusive, yep. non-binary inclusive. And so the bi within bisexuality refers to same and different sexuality. I know, I know personally growing up, it was, it was very black and white in what bisexuality was described as. It was it male, female, that's it. Non-linear, it's 50% attraction to each side. No. But no. you're saying that it's, very, it's, a, it's a scale kind of. Yeah, kind definitely, of definitely. And it, like this definition was written in the 70s. Like it's been around. It's been around for fifty years. Um, the bisexual manifesto was written in the in the nineteen nineties, and it clearly defines bisexuality not about gender, but about um, the attraction to people of your own gender and attraction to people of a different gender. Um, and then we use the term bi plus, uh, and that's just an umbrella term for the whole community. Uh, it's that includes bisexuality, pansexuality, which is um, growing in popularity for identity, um, but other things like omnisexuality. We're getting into trickier territory here. Um, <laughs> sexual fluidity, hetero flexibility, homo flexibility, all sorts of things. It's, well, it's, it's for me personally, I believe it's good that we're, we're starting to have a better understanding that because it is fluid, um, mm. that people don't specifically feel like they identify with bisexuality. Yeah. So they don't feel comfortable enough to identify with that. As yourself, you came out as, as gay originally. Mm -hmm. um, now that you've taking this step and now you identify as bisexual mm -hmm. or bi plus. Um, do you want to elaborate on your journey a little bit for me? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I came out as gay at 13 and that came about because I realized I was attracted to, to other men, people yeah. of my same gender. And I remember going to see a counselor about this and they asked me like, oh, so when you see other, boy, like when you see guys in the shopping center, do you find them attractive? I'm like, yeah. And they just tick that box. And they tick that box. Gay. And I said, well, you're gay. And they never asked me, about my attraction to women or girls. And so um, I said, okay, well, I guess I'm gay then. And they is this said, in rural Victoria? This is in the outer suburbs of Melbourne. Oh, nice. But, you know, it, a fairly liberal place, fairly fairly happy. And like my upbringing was great. And um, I remember when I came out as gay, my parents said, um, well, you know, how about you let yourself grow up and see what happens? And um, funny enough, both of my, um, both my brothers are bisexual. And so, um, but they both ended up with women and having families. And so my parents said, you know, both your brothers were bisexual growing up, but you know, they ended up with women. So keep your mind open. And I took that as homophobia. I took that as being like, you're not gay. And it turns out that they were right. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it, but it took me so long to realize what they meant. And it took me so long to realize that I was bisexual. So even before I came out as gay, I had lots of relationships with, with girls. Um, and then growing up, I'd have secret relationships with girls. If I was sleeping with a woman, it would be in secret. Um, within the gay community, there's so much misogyny and biphobia and just couldn't tell anyone about it. And then it got to my mid twenties and just sort of went like, enough's enough. I can't live a life that's not my own. Um, I want to be able to be open and happy. And I also want women to know that like, you know, I'm good to go. You, you touch on the, the gay community and how 
they treat you. And one of my big things and the reason we're, we're doing today and the reason that we all got together and suggested doing it is I know as a gay man, you spend your entire teenage years trying to convince somebody that your sexuality is not a phase or it's, it's actually who you are. But then as adults, it seems to be there's a consensus among the gay community that bisexuality or bi-class or being, if you're sleeping with men, it's, it's a transitional thing. <laughs> um, that people who say they're bisexual sexual are just transitioning to gay. Um, do you, have you had that kind of feedback or suggestion? I know I've heard it about you. <laughs> have you? <laughs> oh, they talk oh, on the streets. Okay, I don't encourage people to write what they've heard about me in the chat. <laughs> Uh, and you're not telling anyone what you've heard about me either. Um, uh, so I find that whole transitional thing really interesting because I started off as gay. And so what, am I transitioning Transition to back. straight? Yeah. Um, no, it, bisexuality is the destination. Yep. And, and that's, that's where I belong and it's where a lot of people belong. Like, um, well, it's just, it's just, I find it frustrating myself that we, we as gay men take so much time to convince people that we're gay that we can't accept someone else's sexuality i think like one issue about it is because a lot of bi people don't come out till later um you know there's a a misunderstanding of what bisexuality is it takes a long time for people to get that language and actually understand yeah. what it is understand themselves um and then b there's so much biphobia around and so they're not comfortable to come out they can't come out to their gay friends they can't come out to their straight friends and then like me it got to my mid-20s and i just went enough's enough like i have to be out i have to live my truth i have to be open and whole and happy and here well, I, I guess am. also i know in my situation is i came out of, as bisexual when i was a teenager okay. because for me that was a safety net sure. um and i'm not bisexual it was just a safe it was a stepping stone for me so do you think that the community might have that perception because that's what they've gone through that's what they've done themselves Perhaps, but I like any with anything. You can't project your own experiences on other people. Mm -hmm. So, like, if, if that's what you did, then that's that's fine. If that's what any viewers have done, that's fine. Um, but you know, for people that identify as bisexual, you know, it, it's it's a really important thing for us. It's a really intrinsic thing for us. It's like it's not just a sexuality. It's a community. It's a culture. It's a worldview. Like that goes into my next question. Oh, good. <laughs> I uh, so planned that one. What, what, do you, what do you find the importance of finding community? Um, finding other bisexual or bi-plus members. Well, we all know how important community is. Yep. Like, no one wants to be alone, right? Like, what does community mean to you? That's why we live in Surrey Hills, right? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I'll, I'll hit the question back to you. What does community mean to you? Um, so I know for me as a teenager when I came out, um, I moved to Sydney straight away because you don't want to be alone. <laughs> you don't want to... You, you want an understanding from your peers and those... those around you and what you've gone through and and a lot of us have gone through a lot of trauma growing up mm -hmm. um, yourself included myself included um so it's trying to have be within a community where people understand what you've gone through um is valuable um, yeah. and it's one reason why i still live in the same area yeah. still live in sydney um it's just and this is where my friends are we all get, we all have an under, a mutual understanding of what all this has gone through yeah so like you can just go off that a lot of people assume that bi people belong or should be within the gay community um, or within the wider LGBTIQ plus community. And yes, while we're present there and we also we have a place within the queer community, we really need people that understand our very specific experiences, just like gay men do. You know, gay people really need to be around people like them to understand not only who they are, but also to inform themselves on how to, you know, be a part of the world. Yeah. And so it's no, it's no different for bi plus people. You know, they've got a, a rich, rich community. I had no idea when I came out. I came out all alone, didn't you know. Now you're wearing the shirt. And now I'm wearing the shirt yeah, and doing, and doing this, this, this Instagram live. But I really want to make the point that there is a huge community. There are parties, there are, there are events to get into, there are apps, there are great apps. Um, and we're really everywhere. I mean, um, bi plus people make up well more than half of the LGBTIQ plus community. We're huge. Um, and we come from all different directions, whether you come from having grown up as gay or having grown up as straight. Um, like I said, bisexuality is the destination and it's the destination for way more people than we think. So let's get a bit personal now. Sure. So Steve, when Hit you... Does, uh, do I take okay. my top off now? No, not that personal. Okay. Um, let's, keep it, let's keep PG. <laughs> uh, so when you actually came out as, as bisexual, you were yeah. diagnosed with HIV. Yeah. Um, that's why you, you're an ambassador for the Bobby Goldsmith Foundation. And yes. I'm here as an ally for both your HIV status and your sexuality. Yeah. So, Every, everyone look at this. Um, this is a good ally. I'm doing my best. <laughs> um, how's your experience with living with HIV different as a bi? 
So it's different because the way that we we set up our services for people living with HIV, um, we we jumble gay men and bi men together. And like that point we just made, uh, how important it is to be around your community, around people that share your experiences. We treat bi men, we've probably all heard the term men who have sex with men, right? You know, that includes gay men, yeah, bi men, and any other man who has sex with men. I thought that was a chat. No, no, no. <laughs> MSM? No, M2M? I don't know. Um, but MSM is that term. And so when, when you're only, when you're asking bi men to tear themselves apart and only acknowledging the part of them that's attracted to men, you're not acknowledging that um, most bi men we, bi men also are men who have sex with women. Mm -hmm. We have sex with non-binary people. We have sex with trans and gender diverse people. Um, you know, our, our attraction to men is only, in most of us, a very small part. And, you know, even talking about parts is, is a problem because we're not 50% gay. We're not 50% straight. We're just 100% bisexual. Have you found a different reaction to your, your HIV status from those two communities? Um, it's different because, you know, we educate the gay community so well on HIV. I mean, you'd know. Um, I mean, you're an ally yourself. You're HIV negative and you know HIV like the back of your hand. Um, well, I, know, I know personally the reason I had to educate myself. I had yeah. to proactively go out of my way to educate myself. And the reason I did that was were because my friends like you yeah. were becoming HIV positive And I knew that obviously the message wasn't getting out there if I didn't, if I didn't have the knowledge that I have now. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I went out of my way. But I find... Gay men, we're, we're very complacent. So the community who should have the most education, sometimes we don't. Well, you do have the best education. So if you don't think it's great, then imagine what the education for women women is like. Okay. Um, very true. You know, we do not target any of our HIV education to women. And, you know, my the majority of my sexual partners are women. And so for me to have to have discussions not only around contraception, I then have to have conversations around HIV. We have to have all sorts of other conversations, sexual health discussions. And that just adds all sorts of complication because if someone doesn't know what HIV is, how am I meant, what, what HIV really means, um, how am I meant to have a conversation about undetectable equals untransmittable, which of course, this is me putting my health educator hat on, uh, undetectable equals untransmittable means if you have... I thought you were asking no. me, I thought you were, you were leading to this. Uh, no. So if you have a, a, an un undetectable viral load, you yeah. actually cannot trans HIV to your sexual partner. Yeah, so, um, and no matter the gender of my partner, so with men, with women, it's it's all good. And so I'm finding that I have to be a constant educator, and any person living with HIV is an educator. But um, it, just, it just... Anyone being an ambassador for BGF is also <laughs> constantly having to educate. Yeah. But, you know, you're, you're starting at different points. Talking to a gay man or, or a man um, about my HIV status, um, they have a lot, they're far further ahead than, say, if I'm talking to a woman about my HIV status. And so um, that makes it really, really difficult. I know personally I've noticed that the education seems to have gotten a lot better with the introduction of PrEP. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about, do you feel like that, that has kind of changed the tide of stigma around HIV or has it compounded? A amongst gay men, yeah, because um, PrEP is really well targeted towards gay men. But, you know, that doesn't help by guys like me. Um, you know, a fact about bi men is usually we have sex within the bi plus community. Mm -hmm. So we have sex with other bi men, we have sex with women, usually bi women. Um, that's a really common common thing because, you know, when we, we branch out of that community, we encounter a lot of stigma, um, a lot of erasure, and it just can be really, really difficult. And so um, with PrEP, until we actually start targeting it at all the partners of bi plus men, you know, bi men like me who are living with HIV face a whole lot more stigma. And, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at data and research around um, how HIV stigma affects different populations, bi plus men are at the bottom. We have worse social health outcomes, worse um, social and health outcomes than any other group. And, um, you know, we sort of have to question like why that is. And I think that's just because we have been doing business as usual. We like to pretend that bi men are gay men. We don't look at um, the full experience of bi men. And so um, we, you know, we, we have to rethink how we deal with this group. Nice. So we'll move on to the next question. Yeah. Um, I just got a message from behind, so I, um, I wasn't ready for it. You want me to keep talking? Oh. Um, it says Simon, speak up. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, so we're going to move this oh, on to well, uh, community uh, questions. And we'll just check with our lovely Bobby Dawson Foundation assistant about if we have any questions. Um, how does stigma experienced by bi plus men differ from bi plus women? So it all sort of comes from a similar vein. And so let's talk about biphobia for a second. So a lot of people think that biphobia and homophobia are the same thing. 
they're similar. So biphobia in, um, incorporates um, homophobia. So say a, a bi person like me um, will experience a form of homophobia from say the broader society, from, from, from straight people perhaps. Um, but then we experience biphobia from within the LGBTIQ plus community. And so um, I get judgment, stigma, discrimination, hate sometimes from um, people within my community. And um, that's a very, very common experience for bi plus people. And so to look at those, how biphobia sort of is structured, so we, we call it sort of a double whammy discrimination. So homophobia you, just comes from, from broader society, whereas bisexuals get it from multiple angles. Um, no pun intended. Um, Do you feel like the, I'm o sex positive, so the, the over over sexualization over. of bisexual women by straight men is and leads into that discrimination towards bisexual gay Yeah, so... Bisexual men, sorry. Yeah, so the, the, the discrimination by men and by women face it, are slightly different. So, um, for example, bi women uh, find it quite difficult. Um, to, I don't know how to say this properly. Uh, there's a lot of biphobia from the lesbian community towards bi plus women. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of biphobia from the gay community towards bi plus men. And they look a bit different because um, bi plus men are quite sexualized by gay men. So bi plus men usually don't have a problem hooking up with gay men, um, even though, like I said, um, and data shows this, bi plus men um, often opt not to have sex with gay men. Um, but bi plus women actually find it very difficult to um, form sexual relationships with lesbian. That's just a yep. generalization. But you know, that's one form of the discrimination. And then bi plus women have to face that sexualization from heterosexual men. And so we've always got to wonder what, you know, the gays, the, the male gays, um, you know, I gave up worrying what gay men think about me a long time ago. And the bi plus women I know, um, who are just like, just awesome. I've learned everything I know from bi plus women. Um, you know, just have to ignore what, um, what heterosexual men think of them. And that's, like I said earlier, that's why um, within the bi plus community, we usually stick to that because yeah. that's where we're safe. Um, as, we, we, as we mentioned earlier, your, yeah, yeah. your safety net is within a community that understands what you go through. Yeah, and actually understands what multi-gender attraction looks like. You know, there's, there's no questions. If I'm to hook up with a gay guy, you know, explaining what my sexuality means and, and my sexual history, I mean, you'd be amazed. Like, I'll, I'll mention, you know, the women that I have sex with and they'll act with disgust. And I'm just like, well, if you're trying to turn me on, we're not doing a very good job. And, um, and, you know, it's the same thing with bi-plus I, I just don't want to hear about you having sex. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get who it's with. Well, yeah. I have this video to show well, you. <laughs> I'll pass. So, I'm not actually discussing about who you're having sex with. It's the fact you're having sex. Thank you. Well, um, you see, that's, that's fine. That's I don't not, need to know about it. That's we'll specific discrimination. See if we have any more questions from our team. So, you want to go the long-term sort of relationship, possibly even married, you prefer to have that really understanding man? I'll go over that just in case the audience could hear that. So if you're looking to have a long-term relationship with either male or female, would you want that to be with a gay man or a female, basically? Um, it's, not a, it's not about men or women. <laughs> it, it, it's about the person. Um, but funny enough, I'm in a long-term relationship with a man. And we love Andrew. My beautiful Andrew, if you're watching, love you, honey. He's watching. Um, no, we've been together for four years and like, He's that beautiful long-term relationship and understanding gay man. He's gay um, and he doesn't necessarily fully understand what my bisexuality means, but he understands how important it is to me. And so we're in an open relationship and we're perfectly happy with that. And so I'm allowed to have sex with the people that I want to have sex with. Um, and that makes me feel whole. That makes me feel, you know, an ability to be able to connect with my sexuality, which is really important after spending my entire life in the closet. Um, it's really, really important for me to be able to have those experiences because they're really, really formative. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about so, so you mentioned about how because you spent all that time in the closet. Yeah. Um, do you, how do you feel now that you've come out? Do you feel that you are more yourself? Um, is it how do you feel not having to hide who you are? Uh, uh, like at a personal level. At a personal level. So I was at um, at Pride in Montreal recently and i had a and there was a friend there's some me. stories i've heard there are and videos um and a friend of mine who who i knew from sydney from a few years ago but who moved back to canada um had some fun old videos of me from a pool party we were at from like six years ago and he brought them out and to him he saw someone fun and crazy um having the time of their lives and what I actually saw in that video was someone who was hiding all of their problems. Lost someone who was deeply unhappy, who yeah. was drinking too much, using too many drugs and just hiding everything. And since coming out, 
for for all, anyone watching this who's queer knows how good life is out of the closet, and it's the same thing for bi plus people. And so for me being out of the closet, there's just no there's it's, no it's alternative. It's definitely there's one of those things good. where it's like life outside the closet seems scary, but yeah. it's getting there that's hard. But once you're there, like I know personally, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. Um, if I had like a miracle and God came to me and said you could be straight, I'm like, nah, fuck that. Yeah, hell no. <laughs> I'll pass. Hell no. <laughs> and like, you know, for any, any bi guys, especially watching this, um, you know, just know that there is a huge community here uh, and you can connect with them. Um, there are apps out there that you can use to connect with bi plus people for hookups or whatever. Like a, a lot of people think that they can find what they want on Grindr, but Grindr is a pit of despair. Um, especially for bike guys. So I wouldn't recommend that. But, um, you know, th there is so much out there. And I sort of wish I knew that when I came out because it was scary. I was just stepping into the abyss because I was actually at that point, you know, it's now or never, it's it's sink or swim. And I decided to swim and here I am. So we'll have one more question um, before we wrap this up. Um, what do you need from, because obviously the stigma comes a lot from gay men like myself, even though I'm here as an ally. Um, what would you like from the gay male community? Um, to listen to us, yeah. to listen to bi men and, and to encourage us as well. So, you know, when I came out, because I encountered a lot of biphobia and a lot of bi erasure, I had to cut a lot of people out of my life because it's just not worth the emotional toll to keep people like that in your life. Um, the best people, the best gay men I have in my life, just like my partner and my best friends and you, are the people who encourage me, who, who, who encourage me to be my bi self to put myself out there, um, who will come along to pride with me and wave a bi flag with me, who, you know, celebrate my bisexuality and don't sort of tiptoe around it. Um, if, some, if some people don't want to make a big deal out of sexuality, then that's fine. Um, I do. I, I like to celebrate it. I like to be visible. And that's what we're here to do, would be you know, visible for Bi Visibility Day. And well, so I, I, I personally always think that one of the best things you can do as an ally is mm -hmm. listen and learn. Yeah. Um, would you be comfortable for your friends to come up to you and just ask some questions if even if they're too sticky. Or oh, definitely. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. That educational thing, because a lot of us um, don't think we've been exposed to bisexual people because we've locked ourselves in the Oxford Street bubble. Yeah. Um, but we, we definitely have. Yeah. But so you'd be okay for a friend to come up and... Yeah, you know, all the time. And I get that me. a lot. I get that a lot. And I get a lot of gay guys who are actually bi come out on Zoom. Yeah. Um, count, at countless parties and countless bars, I'll get a guy come up to me and they'll be like, oh, I've seen... The video like this i've seen something you've written um you know i'm actually bi none of my friends know um please don't tell anyone I, i'm out as gay but you know I'm, yep. you know i've got relationships with women and i'm just like well i'm here if you need i give them my number i tell them like you know if you ever need anything i'm here and okay. um yeah and that's that's the beauty of our community we all support each other well thank you for joining me today thank as you. the resident bisexual i'll let you wrap it up awesome <laughs> Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you to Bobby Goldsmith Foundation for hosting this great chat for Bi Visibility Day. Um, if you've got a bi friend, give them a hug. Um, if you've got any questions, ask them respectfully. Um, and make sure you celebrate with us because we're a big, beautiful community and we look forward to welcoming you all. And thank you, Simon. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs>